In this video, I'm going to be going over three awesome places to get Creative Commons photos. And Creative Commons photos are basically photos that you can use on your projects or websites for free without having to pay a fee to use them. In general, all you have to do in order to do this is give attribution to the author, but I'll explain that more in just a little bit here. So the first of the three websites we're going to be going over is creativecommons.org. And this is a really cool one because it's basically a Creative Commons license search engine. Because in a lot of different photo websites, you can manually go in and select through the search options that you only want to see Creative Commons licensed photos, but this does it for you in a really easy way. And also, I'll be listing all these different websites in the description below the video, so if you're looking for a link that I'm going over, if you want to go over the website at the same time, just check out the description below this video, and you'll find the links all in there. So at the top of creativecommons.org, there's a button called licenses that you want to click and from that you want to go to find licensed content and once you do that it'll bring up this search page so all you have to do is select the place of your choice where you want to see these images my two personal favorites from here tend to be Flickr as well as Wikimedia Commons so just go ahead and select one of those and then you go ahead and type in your search query so whatever you want to see so I'll just type in something simple like cat and then hit this search button which will then load up Wikimedia Commons for cats and by default Wikimedia Commons goes to content like Creative Commons licensed content which is basically all of Wikipedia so under the search bar right here you can just go to the multimedia tab click that which will then bring up all the different photos of cats or things that people have tagged cats sometimes they won't be cats at all or anything even similar but that's just the way it goes for the most part though you will find generally relevant photos here and they will also display the sizes of the photos below them which is always really helpful if you're looking for a really large photo, for example. And if I wanted to go back here and then use Flickr instead, I can just go ahead and click on the Flickr button, which will then load up Flickr showing Creative Commons images of cats like this one right here. That's pretty darn great. But also, if you want to do this in a slightly different way, you can just go on ahead and use the search button that is on the page that you've went to. So as you can tell right here, after the little search title on the URL, there's a little extension of text after that search tag, basically saying it's only searching for Creative Commons licensed works. So if I went ahead and typed in something different like dog, it'll go ahead and load images of dogs that are also Creative Commons licensed. So it's pretty easy to go in here and search for multiple images once you find the place that you want to go ahead and search through. So second up here is my personal favorite, and that is Unsplash.com. And a big differentiator for Unsplash.com versus these other websites is that the license used for these Creative Commons images are Creative Commons Zero, which basically means you can use these images for whatever in the world you want to use them for. You don't have to attribute to the original photographer. You could even go in here and just take these images and resell them if that's something you wanted to do. Although I will say do not do that. That's really against the spirit of what this is about. You should really be using these to either help emphasize or display your own work or really completely redoing these and totally changing the context of these images, making them something really special and unique that you've made if the end use for them is something like selling them or displaying them as your own work. And if you do choose to display work created with these images, it's always nice to go ahead and attribute the author, which is listed below. And they'll usually have a website listed if you click on their portfolio. So you can feel free to decide how you want to either attribute or not attribute these images used. A good way to think about it though when you're using stuff like this is how would you want to be attributed or how would you want your work to be used by other people and try to use that as a basic guideline when you go in here and use these different images. But the really cool thing about Unsplash is that it's a highly curated platform. So the front page is curated images that have been selected as being really great examples of what this community offers. So there's a lot of extremely solid work here to pick from and use. So feel free to surf through the front page. I think it's every 10 days there's 10 different photos added to the front page here for you to go ahead and browse through. And they also have this collections tab, which if you click on that, it brings up a bunch of different collections of images. So let's say you have a nature blog and you want to add in some really great nature images. Just click on the collection for nature and there'll be a bunch of awesome images in here for you to pick from and use sort of as you see fit. And a lot of times too, if you're doing something like a hiking company or mountain climbing company logo or text or something like that, and you want a really good image to place your logo or text on top of, 
Images like this mountain image right here tend to work really well for that to help give your design or illustration a little bit more context and kind of help it stand out from the crowd. And also when you're doing something like writing a blog article and you really want to draw people in with a solid image that really captures the feeling of what you're writing about, a lot of the images on Unsplash will do that super, super well. And in general, Unsplash tends to feature images that are a bit more vintage in their execution. And when I say that, it's not like they're really old styled photos, but they tend to be a little bit more matte, a little bit more desaturated in their use of color, as opposed to the next website that I'm going to show, which is 500 Pix. So 500 Pix is a really cool website with a lot of very talented photographers on it. So if you go to 500px.com forward slash creative commons, you'll be brought to this page, which will let you select which license you want to use. And to the right here, I really like that they explain these different types of licenses and what they mean. So most common is attribution, which also means that other people can copy, distribute, display, and perform on your work. So whenever you're using a Creative Commons licensed image, it also means that other people can also use that Creative Commons licensed image. So do keep that in mind when you're choosing to use it because that is just something that goes along with the license type, but they do a good job of explaining all the different license types on the right side here. So definitely check them out. And once you find a license type that you think best suits what you're trying to do or best suits your personal needs, below the images for each license type, there's a little button that will say search all attribution 3.0 photos or whatever that case may be. So just click on that, which will then bring up a page for photos licensed like that. So then you can go ahead and scroll through here and find photos that work really well for whatever you're trying to do. So a big differentiator between something like Unsplash and 500 Pix is that the photos used here tend to be a lot more processed, like digitally processed in Photoshop or Lightroom, something like that, which in return makes them extremely colorful, very saturated with color like this bird photo right here, just an excellent example of some really well done photography and then post processing after that was taken. So if you're a fan of very saturated photos with lots of color and a lot of technical execution behind them, then 500 Pix is a great spot to go ahead and browse through for photos like that. There's also a really super diverse selection of different types of photos here from portraiture to landscape to architecture. So feel free to browse through all this stuff and find photos that best fit what you're looking for. One thing to note with 500 Pix though is is that there will be some like adult content photos. So this thumbnail right here is blacked out and it says adult content. So if you click on one of these, like 99% of the time, it's a picture of a naked woman. So be mindful of that if you're at work searching through photos and you're like, hmm, adult content, let's click that. You might regret doing that if you're at a place like work, but in general, the photos that are labeled adult content tend to be artistic nudes. So that's the general style that you'll find when you go ahead and click those, but just be careful if you're at work or in a public place, if that isn't something you want other people to see as well. But like I said before, there's a lot of amazing, amazing photography on this website and really bright, cool colors tends to be a common theme amongst a lot of the photos on 500 pics. So if that's something Something that you're looking for, definitely give this one a try. Like let's say you're doing a travel blog on the Taj Mahal. What a fantastic image right here to go in and use. And all you have to do to use it is to credit the photographer that took it. So that's a pretty sweet trade-off for some amazing photography for your website or blog. And of course, it's totally free to go in here and use these. So that's it for this video. There was three different places, all of kind of like a little bit different style in terms of how they show you the photos and the type of photos that they tend to display. So hopefully at least one of them is pretty useful for you. In general, it's just awesome to have really solid photography to display either your design or illustration work on top of, or to make your blog or website really come to life in a way that it just couldn't if it didn't have any solid quality photos on it. So I do hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please like and favorite. And if you want to see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming for illustrators, designers, and in this case, bloggers too. Thanks so much for watching.